Clark, who joins us from Reading in the UK. He's an associate professor in microbiology at the University of Reading. Hi, Simon. Thanks for joining us again. You know, Good we've also been talking about the official responses to the virus that we've seen across the world, some getting praise, others being criticized. If we look at the United States, though, now, including New York and California, the biggest, you know, most populated states, declaring states of emergency, contrast that with what President Trump has just said. I want to read you a tweet. This is what he said most recently. And we have a gra graphic of that. So he says, last year, 37,000 Americans died from the common flu. It averages between 27,000 and 70,000 per year. Nothing is shut down. Life and the economy go on. At this moment, there are 546 confirmed cases of coronavirus in the U.S. with 22 deaths. Think about that. Simon, does he have a point? Um, not really. Uh, that's 400 odd deaths so far. Um, what we're going to see with this in the United States, the United Kingdom and elsewhere, I think, is a snowballing, an increase in numbers, uh, which will probably become exponential over the next couple of weeks. The uh, states of emergency in New York and California, I presume, are just sort of legal things that allow those state authorities to take on powers to help control the viral infection. OK, I'm going to play devil's advocate, though. I mean, I myself have been listening to a number of coronavirus survivors um, and I was a bit shocked at the symptoms they were describing being less than what I had personally experienced with one of the worst uh, flu viruses that hit my home city years ago. Um, they're talking about a fever of 103, a severe fever given, but lasted about eight or nine hours. And some of them admitted that they didn't even include the symptoms of a sore throat or the terrible you know, cough or stuffy sinuses you might get with a bad cold. So what are we really fearing here? Well, those people are the ones, and they make up the majority of cases, who don't have this in, in any great severity. But there will be enough people that don't, that are ill, who made really ill and who are hospitalised about this. And of course, as modern, me modern medicine advances, we get more and more people who survive, who live full lives with compromised immune systems, with other problems. And they're the ones that are going to be hit by this. And they're the ones that are going to be admitted to hospital and who are going to put a really heavy strain on our health services. So if you'd asked me a month ago, I would have taken a line not dissimilar from President Trump's. But today, I'm less sanguine about it. I think it's more of a threat than we realized. How much more should authorities be doing? Or are they on the right track right now from what you're seeing, especially across Europe? Well, I think the authorities need to respond to the infection, the caseload uh, that, that they have as and when they get it, not in advance. There is no point in putting uh, control, me control uh, procedures in place which would control a large outbreak of infection when only a small handful of them have it so far. It won't work. Those measures are designed and put in place to control large numbers of people who are infected, not the small numbers we see at the moment or we see outside of China and Italy at least. Okay. Simon, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much as always for joining us from Reading. We appreciate your insight.